But you're making the assumption that black students are academically inferior, and they're not. No, you are actually. That's 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 the the, the the basic. No, no, no. That you are making the assumption that they are inferior. You just said that they don't belong there. Policies. (laughs) I'm talking about the students that are based on the policies that you are defending right now, saying that we should have these policies that let them into these universities, not based on their skill set, but based on the color of their skin. So you are assuming that they are inferior. Well, what if I told you there are white people out there who feel they are being discriminated against intentionally and are even filing lawsuits because of it? Well, recently, the news has reported allegations of discrimination towards white people in university admissions policies are harmful also to the people that they purport to help um and we have all of the evidence there to look at uh when you artificially place a black american into a school in which they do not belong based on their knowledge doesn't mean that they go on to get a's in fact there was a black adjunct professor you guys have definitely heard of him dr thomas soul uh who was teaching at cornell university and he found that the majority of the black american students that were there were on academic probation Now, these students were some of the smartest in the nation, but because they were artificially placed amongst their peers at Cornell University, they were failing on academic probation. These policies have never helped black Americans. It's just basically policies that are put in place to make people feel good, right? I feel like I'm doing something when, in fact, I'm actually creating harm. You either know the answers or you don't. You're right about uh, Thomas Sowell. He also said equal opportunity policies are against racism. Affirmative action is racism under new management. He said it just doesn't work. It doesn't help. Can I just ask a question? How do you consider it when we're telling you factually, in effect, it is a bad thing for the black students? What are the constellations of factors that involve them thriving or not? Is it solely due to their race? I know it's it's due to their intellectual capabilities, which is how students should be judged. And I do want to say one. Is that limited to just their race? It's not limited to just their race, which is why that would be an equal policy if you allowed people to be judged based on their merit, you know, on their merit and not based on their skin color. It also, there's something about it that's very patronizing. You're a black person, so I assume that you can't get on this school based on your merit. I don't think Sasha and Malia Obama are people that have struggled and therefore should be allowed to get into the college universities on a higher basis than white kids that have worked harder than them, especially Asian Americans, which we never discuss um, and are probably the most discriminated against in this country when it comes to universities. When you say, hey, we have black students at a particular school who aren't performing at that school as well the immediate assumption that you're making is well maybe it's because they're not smart enough they they're not good enough or they don't belong here whereas it could be about the experience that they're having at that institution professors who believe that they're not intelligent enough that they don't have the capability to do the work or they talk about them with the they statements they're lazy they don't care they don't really belong here uh, you're, they're you're only here for the financial. I'm giving you actual facts. No, right? I'm giving so you can, actual facts based on extensive research. You can fantasize. You can say, well, maybe they just don't feel done. good. Um, but that's not the case. I mean, I went. I went to university. I did not feel good. Right. I. I didn't pull the best grades in high school. Probably got into a better university than I should have gotten into based on my performance in high school. It wasn't because of my feelings. It's because okay. I wasn't focused on it. And that you know, we're talking about a cultural problem. What's going on back at home, as was in my circumstance. And none of that is because of institutionalized policy. Um, it almost seems like you guys refuse to accept that, you know, black students aren't performing well, you feel like you have to have this burden of responsibility when, in fact, if you actually wanted to help, you would look at the facts, re-examine the fact that it's not helping anybody, it's not helping black Americans to artificially place them into universities, and you'd make effective change. But you're making the assumption that black students are academically inferior, and they're not. No, you are, actually. That's 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 the the, the basic. No, no, no. That you are making the assumption that they are inferior. You just said that they don't belong there. (laughs) I'm talking about the students that are based on the policies that you are defending right now, saying that we should have these policies that let them into these universities, not based on their skill set, but based on the color of their skin. So you are assuming that they are inferior. We should not be looking at race when it comes to college admissions at all. And when it comes to things like affirmative action, If we truly said we cared about minorities, it wouldn't be disproportionately affecting Asian Americans, as Candace said, like it is now. Why do we not care about that minority group? We absolutely care about all minority groups, just like we care about all students. But I think everyone has a significant misunderstanding of these policies. They're comprehensive or holistic in nature. This is one factor among many other factors. And then we say across all those factors, looking at these and taking them in tandem, is this student best prepared? Because it's not just about your intelligence, 
that's important. That's also about your drive, about your resilience, about your ability to overcome challenges. And that's what makes you successful. Even with those factors taken into account, Asian students and white students are discriminated against when compared to their black counterparts. How is that the case? And it seems that with affirmative action, we've dictated we care about black students. We care about Hispanic students. These are the minorities who are going to benefit from African this. Native and American. Asians are not. And Native Americans. But the through line is not necessarily socioeconomic status. It doesn't seem to be resources. It seems to be that these are the minority groups that we feel bad for. We don't feel bad for Asian Americans because they have a culture of high academic standing. They have a culture of drive and of, of facing adversity. We look at black students and Hispanic students and Native American that's students. We are inferior. And, and we pity them. I, that's what makes my blood boil. I mean, it's just I am not less than you because you are white. I don't need you to look at me and feel bad for me because of the color of my skin. And that's effectively what you're doing. Every time you take an application, you say, oh, well, this girl's black, so I kind of feel bad for her. So I'm going to put her at the top of a line. It's just it's just not necessary. I believe, right, that black Americans are capable of performing in the same capacity as their white peers. You two don't actually believe that. I because actually believe if you that. support affirmative action, you are basically saying that black Americans cannot do it on their own. No, what I'm saying is that there's a history of racism and exclusionary practices. And it says we're reducing it all the, all down, all the way down just to race. And what these admissions practices are actually doing is saying, no, there's a constellation of factors that we're considering in the holistic review of this so application. So race from the applications is basically making it about race. You're saying these are the black people, these are the white people, these are the Asian people, these are the Native American people, as you mentioned. But as one of the audience members said, what about people who are of mixed race? You know, I'm of mixed background. What am I supposed to mark on an application? Am I supposed to mark multiple boxes? And plus, mark if you black. are painting people yeah. as an oppressor, if you're white, That's and a then terrible saying thing that you're oppressed... Well, it's the truth, because you believe in affirmative action, so I said mark black. If you're then, a student, I, I'm, in a, I'm an interracial relationship, so I can speak to this. I have a son that's half white and a son that's half black and a daughter that's half white and half black. Okay. They're going to mark black because I know that there are people like you at the universities who will say, well, because this person is black, I'm just going to let them in. No, they're going to mark black because they're black. Well, they're half <laughs> black and half white. They're, 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 they're both, right? So it is true. You overlook yes, inter black right. So you I'm overlook, <laughs> you overlook <laughs> interracial students. But so why? what do you mean? Why are you saying, yes, yeah, they're going to mark black because they're black? socialize them in society. So the answer is, if you, you can't, I mean, you can mark both. Can you mark both? I don't know if you can. Yes. What are you going to look at that applicant as a little bit less because they're half white? How do you guys figure that out? How they look at it is... Again, holistically, holistically across the number word. of different I factors. I love me a buzzword. Holistically and racial consciousness. Oh, yeah. Reverse discrimination. A it's buzzword. not reverse discrimination. It's just discrimination. discrimination. It's just racism if you're judging people on the basis of their skin color. I don't know why this is so difficult. I mean, you have to go to a, through an extraordinary amount of school. You ha almost have to have a PhD to not be able to see this. Well, we're talking about holistic admissions, and we're talking about how that, and, and I know you don't like that word, but that's just true. It. That's what it's called. Or comprehensive. You can call it that, too. Ultimately, what those are doing is looking at multiple factors. Again, it's trying to get at drive and determination. So Let me finish real quick. So if someone mentioned earlier that, well, we should be, this gentleman here, we should be thinking about how there are other challenges that are happening earlier on. I would argue that those other challenges earlier on are a function of school systems from the very beginning that serve to disadvantage these students. So the very fact that a student gets to the point where they've made it through the K-12 education system, which has disproportionately suspended them, expelled them, placed them in special education, told them that they're not smart enough, that they're not good enough, that they don't belong here, and they've gotten to the point where they've been able to apply for college, and the college sees, hey, they, despite this, they've been committed to community service. Despite this, they've been committed to uh, being involved um, in leadership opportunities. Despite these things, look at all they've done, and for a college to say, oh, that's a, a bad thing? No, it's a positive thing because what we want is people race? who are going to go out just society. Race? When you put a black student on a campus or put them in a job and you've given them, uh, you know, preferential treatment in order for them to be there, you've actually robbed them of knowing they've gotten an opportunity based on their own merit. So they're questioning themselves and their place in the environment. And for all the non-people uh, of color who are surrounding them, they now get to look at any person of color and go, I don't know whether or not you got this job based on merit or based on preferential treatment. And I know this to be true because I'm a biracial woman who has those thoughts now because of the culture that we're living in well what i say is that when we look at teachers who are the most effective with teaching our most underrepresented students they tend to be individuals who come from underrepresented backgrounds but the reason that they're also effective also with white students as well is because oftentimes your faculty of color aren't solely focused just on the cognitive but also on the relational said, said differently 
it doesn't matter how good you teach. If you don't have a relationship with a student, you won't be as effective as you could be. And our faculty of color and staff of color tend to do that. You're talking about the art of teaching. You're talking about building relationships. They are actually failing when it, turns, when it comes to actually teaching these kids things. This Who, is why I'm, failing? I'm, I'm telling you, inner city communities. I'm talking about Baltimore, Baltimore, Minneapolis, Los Angeles. All of the inner city communities are failing black children because they're focusing on the art and not the actual facts. In Baltimore, We're as talking just about one teacher example, diversity, though. I mean, you're referring I'm, to the full density of the school. I'm talking about the art of teaching, which you're saying they're better for the student. They're actually not better for the student, right? So you're saying Across that five schools are not in Baltimore, which is an inner city, which focuses, I suppose, on the art of teaching, they couldn't find a single black child, a single child that was proficient in reading and writing because they think that having somebody who looks like you somehow means that it's going to be better. Candice, let me let you know that I am a teacher and I just had a conversation with a student last week. She were, like I said, half the staff of the school where I work were black or uh, teachers of color. Well, one of the things that that student said is that I want to stay here. I want to stay here because there's more black teachers here and I feel more comfortable around black teachers. So I, I just want you to know that it's not necessarily a matter of the students, the art of teaching that makes these students feel more comfortable, but there is research and science that shows that when you have a teacher that looks like you in your classroom, you do better. And also I just wanted to say with respect they're to not doing the, better. the numbers, uh, with, respect, with respect to the numbers, that's because you see the numbers, right? You see that there's over 2000 white teachers who are failing our students versus the 237 in the district that are getting cycled around to different schools that's based just, on hiring that's just policy. Incorrect. That's just incorrect. Yeah. You, you so are saying not, something not, that is not based on a study and not based on fact. Not, just because not, a teacher looks like you does not mean that you are going to perform not, better in that class based on your uh, academic abilities. A diversity isn't just a bunch of people looking different in a room. It's a bunch of people thinking differently in a room. And I know that there are schools in which they are training people they believe to be inclusive when in fact they're training people to feel bitter against one another. And this is the problem with the American education system as a whole. They want this emphasis on feelings and not facts. You hear people going, well, I just want to feel good. Right? I just want to feel like I have a black teacher that understands where I come from because I'm a black person and this is where I come from. I want these students to actually perform well. I want a society that is based on facts and not on people's feelings because what you have as a result is an uh, education system that is failing the students that it purports to be trying to help, and there's no question about that. Right. And just going back to your earlier comment, I had a professor, uh, a teacher that I loved in high school, and I got an A in that class. I learned absolutely nothing. I had a teacher that I absolutely hated in AP English, and I learned the most in that class. This is what we need to focus on. Students actually engaging and being challenged and learning, not feeling wholesome and, and feeling conscious.